Hi everyone and welcome to SWPL My Story Short and today we are joined by Celtic manager Fran Alonso. How are you Fran? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here. No, not at all. It's it's great to have you along and to to hear your story from the from the inside of, of such a big club that's made such large strides over the over the last few years. So uh, there's only one place to start. Ten wins from ten in the league. Um over fifty goals now that you've scored. You probably couldn't have wished for a, a better start to the season. Yeah, um, it came as a surprise. Um, obviously, we, we knew uh, this year in summer, we knew we would lose some of our uh, top performers from last year. Um, they have so many offers on the table. Some of them were like incredible. So we knew, but another of the players we lost, they came as a surprise, a last minute thing. Or, um, so we have to replace many more players than what we wanted uh, at first. And at times during June, uh, you know, um, we I I was I was worried. I was worried because of, you know, a, a very transitional year after being so close last year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you lose from the best starting eleven, maybe five six players, um, you know that that's that's far too many. So we were a little bit worried, but to be fair, the the the, the work uh, we did uh, as a club on 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 June was fantastic. I think the recruitment has been. A spot on at least so far. Um, the girls, so many girls already knew the league, and that has helped them to settle. And then, obviously, we are uh, we are a club that every single year brings so many players from abroad. So our even our Scottish players, so our players from not from Scotland, but that they've been at the club um, for so long, they really help to 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 integrate the new players. Um, and that's massive uh, because you know the, if you got players, think about they don't even speak the language. Um, we got Celia Barclays from France. She, her English, when she came, it was very, very uh, poor, very little. Um, but the football, the football thing, she, she was able to integrate straight away. Um, obviously, we do a lot of presentation, graphic, uh, graphic presentations for the visual learners. But um, I couldn't be, I couldn't be any happier, as you say. Um, ten wins from ten, fifty-two goals scored. Uh, Wow, what a star! Uh, and not only that, is is the performance of the team. I think from the ten games, two of the performers I really didn't like. I don't think we were anywhere near our best. Um, we still managed to win, but I think the rest of the performance, the other eight, I was the other eight. I would say they've been they've been fantastic. Um, nine or ten out of ten. Uh, so that's that's a very uh, give us a lot of confidence. Of course, we haven't won anything yet. It's just a a, a perfect start that we never had before. So it's a new situation, uh, and we need to just go game by game and and make sure uh, the results will come. If we put the work that we put every day at training, we are more demanding than ever before at training. Um, we demand, you know, very very high standards, but also physically, um, and the players are responding very well. So despite the amount of games, because we have uh, with the Champions League included, we have like something like five or six. Uh, weeks with midweek midweek uh, game that come from precision as well. So so many games so far, but that also helped me to 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 keep players happy, to rotate players, to everyone feel important. And that when you when you got an injury or, or when a player uh, come come on, they are all used to play. They don't get nervous and they can carry on playing at the same level. And um, you saw how many different starting elevens and the team has carried on playing even with our young girls. We got Terry Barchill, uh, Paula Partido, Claire Goldie, all teenagers, and and when they they are making a massive impact uh, and helping the team for the most uh, as well as the more senior players. So absolutely delighted with the with the start of the season and and uh, big test big test on Sunday. So hopefully we can carry on with the same level. So as you say, there was there was quite a turnover of players, but you you've cited the recruitment has has been has been fantastic and. Players have came in and hit the ground running, which is a as a manager be looking for. But just to go back to some of the players that were that were already there, and you can see me from the outside and, and watch watching on in the games, you can see their levels of went up. Even established players like Ke- Kelly's performances have went up. Amy is flying, got her, got a Scotland call up, got her first cap. Um, so that must be pleasing to see as well that it's not going to be a constant uh, replacement of players, but you are seeing performance improvement from the players that have already been there as well and they're keeping up with the levels rising all the time yeah uh, you're spot on so we we got uh, individual meetings like this type of presentations uh, and our goal uh, and I say that to every single player our goal was to make every single player better to play at the at their peak and I think pretty much the whole squad is doing that I think there is no uh, 
probably one single player that is not playing at the moment at, at their best. Uh, even players that we brought from other teams, uh, Colette Cavana after last season, we was you know wasn't a good season for her. She's playing an incredible level. Uh, for me, it's been a better version than the one I really like when she was at Hibs. Um, Amy Gallagher, obviously the numbers speak for for itself. We got played like Kid Lofersky we brought last year uh, just at the end, uh, and now feel like. It feels like she's been with us for 20 years. It's incredible the the the, the culture, everything, how how they are able to 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 grab it and and to feel to feel part of it. Uh, but yeah, I think right now, until now, every player is is playing a, a, at the best or some of the some of the their peak of their career. Some other players, the, like Kaylin Hayes as well, the first cap, uh, Amy Gallagher. We might have a, a, another one uh, hopefully this week. Um, Paula Partido just joined today Spain uh, under 19s. So yeah, they uh, they they are being rewarded because they, every single player is taking responsibility for their own for their own uh, careers from their own path. They got their individual programs in the gym, but also in training, and and everyone is is hitting. You know, the other day we we checked the top speed, and and pretty much 80 percent of the team has hit their top speed uh, since they joined the club. So is uh, we are we are very happy with the um, with the individual development of each player, which means obviously the team is playing at a, at a very high level. But as I say, and this is the most important message, you know, we uh, it's nice to, to 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 praise them because they deserve it because of the work. But, you know, if we want to keep go, uh, getting results, we have to keep working at that level. It's never, it's never good enough. We can always, uh, even if it's 0.1%, we always have to try to aim to be a little bit better because the other teams are are very, very good and, and you know, they are going to be... Uh, pushing until the end of the season. So we need to make sure that we know we haven't won anything and um, hard work is is uh, is the reason why we so far we've been rewarded with good results. Yeah, I think um, last season, final day is testament to that. It is the fine margins. It's always so close at the, at the top of the league um, between yourselves, City and, and Rangers going down to the last day. Um, could have went one of three ways uh, last season. Obviously, disappointing for you, but uh, that would, I would imagine, act as motivation for you and help when you are having this exact chat with with your players. It's it's all well and good that you are you are flying at the top of the league, but nothing nothing is won yet in October, and it's about not less resting on your laurels. But I'd imagine when you go out and you play um, teams out with that that. Uh, top bracket of the league, like for example, you had Partick Thistle at the weekend. When you go to these other teams, that's a cup final for these teams every single time that you go, and you you have to perform. Um, you don't want to be in the the end of an upset. So, um, is that something that obviously the girls are also buying into from from you and the, the information that you're giving them based on that? Yeah, like we always say, we always we all the message is always do not underestimate any opponent. We always when we play teams that are below us on the table or, or that are in the last year were bottom six, or this year are maybe bottom six of the table. Uh, when we do the opposition analysis, is always try to highlight all their strengths more than uh, highlight their weaknesses. It's highlight their strengths, try try the players not to underestimate them, but from last year, we got the biggest lesson of the of the season. It was totally my fault. I, I organized the 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 mother well game game uh, in a day where our men's side was playing. We didn't have ball boys. The the pitch was almost frozen. It was a terrible decision from me. But I, I didn't I didn't know the weather how it was going to be, um, and and that was uh, that game cost us the league in my opinion. That nil nil at home um, cost us the league. Um, because that's the uh, you know at home dropping two points against a team that were bottom bottom six and the previous game I think we finished nine nil, um, so that that's a game that it get mentioned a lot uh, this year. We need to make sure that doesn't happen, um, and of course I don't blame the players for that day because it's totally my fault and they know that. But um, I thought I I thought uh, that's a big big lesson for us. Uh, Any team every year. The first year I was here uh, for far. Uh, draw to two at K Park. Uh, the year before we draw against Spartans, so we've we've always uh, dropped points every single year against a team from from the bottom six, which is something that, for example, uh, Glasgow City or Rangers never done it in all these years. So I think this is what is costing us um, costing us uh, huge. The, the the first league we lost as well the league by one or two points. Again, the same fixture, Rangers Glasgow City and and City won, and then we qualified for Champions League, but we lost the league. 
uh, in a game uh, against Motherwell. We were playing Motherwell. Uh, GR2, uh, we were won both caps, but we were miles away from, from a Rangers side that finished unbeaten uh, um, the season. But last year, I, th I thought we were outstanding. Uh, in my opinion, you know, um, I thought I thought we would do it. In my opinion, we were the better team, but of course, whoever win the league is always the best team. But in my opinion, we play the better football. We managed to beat them, uh, to beat the, the champions the last three three games we played against them. So we fell, but that, that that came as a surprise. This last goal in the 92nd minute at Ibrox in a with a with a big crowd, um, that that came as a surprise and it hurt. Uh, it hurt a lot. So this year we need to make sure that uh, this uh, we don't we don't drop points. And if we don't drop points, because all the other teams are very good as well. So if we drop points, it's because they, uh, you know, because they are, you know, very good or because not because uh, our standards are not 100. percent um, which I think that day it, it wasn't. So yeah, um, very, very, very important to to take every single game uh, and to push an, every single training session, which is something that, again, we are... Um, that's why the players are playing at their peak, in my opinion, is because we push them every single training session. Uh, it's not only for the games. The game is only the last day of the week, um, but the game starts to be prepared on, 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 a, on a Monday or on a Wednesday. And we are we are really pushing them at training. And, and I think... Um, this is what they need to look after, what they do every single day at training pitch, how they recover later in the evenings, and, and hopefully we can carry on uh, with these good performances and with this and, and getting the three points for as many games as we can. But, um, but yeah, very, very important to keep our standards uh, the highest possible every single day. Uh, what I'd like to, to go on and talk about is actually your journey and your pathway because it is very unique. Um, to now be managing in SWPL, but I think it'd be really interesting to hear a, a big uh, thing for us, uh, SWPL, my story is the story behind the story and opportunities and pathways that people can take to be involved in the game. Um, so could you just tell us a little bit like how you got started and how you've now ended up at Celtic? Yeah, so like like many like many uh, young, young guys or young girls, uh, um, you know, my, my dream was always being a footballer. Uh, but my talent didn't allow me to to be a professional footballer. Um, so then, you know, I I chose a different path. I was in gardening landscaping. Um, I worked for the council in Alcorcón in Madrid. Um, but you know, it felt like like a work that you have to do. Uh, it it was my heart wasn't on it. Um, I had to pass a few exams, so my parents were very proud. But I just didn't feel it. I didn't see myself spending the rest of my life doing a job that I didn't love. I thought that uh, you know life is too short to to, to be spending it doing things that you don't love. Uh, that was my opinion, and so I decided. Okay, so was the was was my dream job knowing that I cannot be a footballer, unfortunately, because of my talent. Um, so then I thought that the next best job is football manager. Um, so I didn't have any qualification, nothing. Uh, but I I am a very determined uh, individual. Um, so I went home. And I obviously the Premier League was the best league in the world at the time. Uh, I went home and I Google um, best weather in UK <laughs> <laughs> because I was concerned about the weather. And and it's a Bournemouth. Uh, so I bought a flight. I bought a flight to Bournemouth. Couldn't speak a word of English. I just took my suitcase, a couple of thousand pounds, and <laughs> fly to Bournemouth um, to start my journey. Uh, so that was obviously in 2007. So it's been many, many years uh, since then. Um, it was very hard at the beginning, obviously, without speaking any English. Uh, I couldn't get any job. I couldn't uh, any opportunities. So I was so lucky to to get a job as a housekeeper uh, in a lesser center, in a sports center. Um, you know, so I was obviously hoovering, cleaning toilets, a job that nobody else wanted to do. I was with, always with a smile because that was my first job in English language. And I could start my, my work towards being uh, my dream, which was being a manager in the Premier League, which I haven't achieved yet, by the way. Um, <laughs> So so yeah, that's how I start. Everyone, why why you leave a why you leave a job as a as a landscaper in Spain to come here to clean for minimum wage five pound an hour? And I say because I'm gonna be a manager in the Premier League, and everyone it's impossible. Um, I always believe it. I think I was the only person that believed it, but I I always did believe it. Um, so then I start to coach. Uh, well, coach help uh, any youth team just put the cons and pick the football because I couldn't talk a word of English, but I start to get familiar with um, football vocabulary, not only English, but football vocabulary. I remember Googling uh, what is a square ball 
because it didn't make sense to me or things like that. But actually, it was very, very helpful. Then I start to referring for free. That's something I will not recommend to, <laughs> to, to any to any coach. <laughs> no, I, I am just joking. Um, but it was hard, obviously, uh, uh, referring youth football for free as a volunteer. Just, just obviously to, to to try to learn, but you know, I get um, I get abuse from both sides most of the game. So, uh, but it was it was a good learning uh, learning lesson in terms of you know message from the coaches to the team. Uh, you know, all all this really helped my football vocabulary. So when I was a little bit more prepared in terms of English language, apart from apart from that, I was studying every day intensive English lesson uh, three hours every day. Um, so I think in three months I was able already to communicate. Uh, not speak a good English, fluent English, but I was able to communicate. Then, because I was cleaning in a sports center, I asked my manager, oh, could I get some hours coaching? Because they got some coaching courses, etc. And and they say, no, no, your English is not yet good enough. Um, which I, it really disappointed me. And what I did is I set up my own uh, coaching academy. Um, so I booked the pitches myself uh, with, a, with a, a guy I was helping with, uh, with his team. Um, and between both of us, we book the pitches. We start with three, five kids, so losing money. Uh, but then we end up in two different sports centers in a few months, two different sports centers with over 100 kids. It was incredible. It was very good. And purely based on, on, on you know, our passion and, and, you know, this individual development. For me, even if they were some of them seven-year-old or eight-year-old, it doesn't matter. You know, my goal was to try to make them a little bit better. Um, they didn't need to be the best player in the world. But they need to be a little bit better than the week before, and the parents and, and the kids they really like it. The, the way we we work with them, the uh, enthusiasm. So that's why I start to grow. Then I start to make a little bit of a name for myself in 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 the area, um, in Bournemouth, Southampton area. So I decided to apply for Southampton Foundation, um, pretty much like like yourself uh, after school clubs, etc. And and I got that job, uh, and I was so happy. I put my so hand on kit. I was like, oh my god, you know, I'm, and and so much closer now. I wasn't really, but you know, just to have the kid with the with the badge of of a professional football club, for me it was it was a very special moment. Um, and I was only two months, two months in the job, uh, and I remember I will never forget. I was finishing. It was like uh, most of them were like eight, uh, seven, eight year old mm -hmm. uh, kids after school clubs. Um, some of them they couldn't kick a ball, so it was it was you know I, I I love it as well you know it was about making them better making them enjoy, um, but um, I received a call from uh, from the club Nigel Atkins who was the manager at, at the time yeah. is the one that got Southampton promoted uh, from the League One to the Premier League, um, and he needed they just signed Gaston Ramirez from Bologna, uh, thirteen million the most expensive sign of Southampton at the time. And he couldn't speak a word of English. So they needed somebody who spoke Spanish, spoke English, and knew football vocabulary. Because you can know both languages and then you won't be able to translate what a square ball is, yeah. uh, for example. So, and he said, but you need to leave everything. At the time, I was already doing some bits as a, a personal trainer. I did the qualifications. I already had um, the level two, level one and level two football uh, coaching qualifications. Um, but yeah, the, from coaching under age, uh, on a Tuesday, uh, it was a game against Swansea on the weekend on the first on the first team uh, changing room, translating from Nigel Atkins to Aston. My legs were shaky. I think now I can say I think it, I was absolutely useless as translating. I didn't understand half of the words. The good thing is nobody knew, <laughs> just me. <laughs> nobody else spoke about languages, so yeah, I I, I don't think I did a great job. Um, uh, at the beginning, uh, just because I was very nervous, and they have their own their own vocabulary, uh, which I didn't understand. They say things like "oh, Seven Eleven," and I was like, "What? What Seven Eleven means?" And then you know, it was obviously wingers in the channels and all this type of thing. But I didn't know at the time. So anyway, um, that's how I started uh, as a as a as a translator. But for me, what I believe is when you are determined, when you don't accept, when you never accept a no, when you never give up. Most of the times things get aligned and, and then you know uh, things things go your way. And if they go your way because you don't give up, they will eventually go your way. Um two things can happen. One is they go your way or you just keep trying. So it's actually it's a win-win situation, in my opinion. So my contract was three months only as a translator. After that, uh, Nigel was crystal clear that he wanted Gaston to push himself, not to rely on me. So after three years, 
you know, he wanted, you know, it was just a three years, a three, sorry, three months contract. It was just a three months contract. And I, I obviously, I, I absolutely love it. I was learning so much and, and you know, from players, from staff, from coaches, top, top world-class coaches. It was incredible, really, for me. Um, so two months and a half into the job, um, I, I have a chat with Nigel and I say, is any chance? I, 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 I do it for free. I don't need to get paid. I do it for free. Just let me stay until the end of the season, at least. And he's a friend. You know, the deal is the deal. It's not about you. We are related with you. What we want is Gaston to to push himself, to rely on himself. We want to stand for bridge to play against Chelsea, Mourinho's Chelsea. Um, and we draw two two incredible result uh, against the best team at the time. That was probably the best team in the country, I believe. I believe they won the league, but I don't remember exactly. But anyway, two two. It was a massive result for Southampton. And after the game, Nigel Atkins got sacked, which, you know, nobody could understand why. Um, so I thought, okay, so he's going to, my my three months are going to cut even shorter because he got sacked before the three months. And the club appointed Mauricio Pochettino. And then I thought, okay, you know, he doesn't need a translator uh, because obviously he's Argentinian and speak both languages. Well, English wasn't, he, he spoke a little bit, not a lot, mm-hmm. but he brought Jesus Perez, his assistant, who spoke good English. Um, so anyway, he didn't need a translator um, for Gaston. Um so I thought, ah, that's, that's me done. But then I met him and, you know, uh, he changed my life. He said, I don't need a translator friend. And he said, I know. And he said, but I could do with an assistant. And since then, I I became, you know, uh, his his assistant, uh, one of his assistants. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So I promised myself that I would be the first person that go into the training ground. I would be the last person to leave the training ground. And that was hard because they wouldn't leave the training ground until 7 p.m. <laughs> they were they were like almost living there. Incredible. Um, so it was it was a very hard time, but it was incredible time in terms of learning. Um the Mauricio is is world class, is is absolutely world class. Uh, the level of detail uh, that I mean, I never even imagined how much and many things I couldn't even learn because it was just too much. But part of my job was logging the training sessions. So everything what we did on the pitch, later I have to uh, put it into into some PowerPoints, do the graphics, the description of the exercise, uh, and then sometimes at the end even match it with the GPS data. So that gives me a lot of knowledge in terms of you know areas, uh, intensity that you create, metabolic power events, the acceleration, the acceleration that you get in certain areas depending on the number. So it gives me a, a lot of tools in terms of physical preparation for a team. But also the the level of detail uh, because he Mauricio was with Bielsa before the level of detail it was incredible really really incredible the problem is I was learning I just didn't put it into practice so I thought you know I'm learning so much but I actually you know I'm just helping so I was you know in rondos I was feeding the balls I was I wasn't really coaching I wasn't you know coaching the team. Uh, I never did that under Mauricio. I was just helping uh, to set up the pitches, to set up the areas, to log in, but not really, really coaching. So I thought I need to put this into practice. Otherwise, I would never like properly learn it. And that's when I decide, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to volunteer in the women game. And, and that's when I apply for Southampton women. At the time, we were TR5. Uh, we, got, we won the league twice in a row. Then now, I, now they are in TR3 or TR4. Um, but anyway... So that was great because everything what I was learning, uh, I was putting into practice. They only trained once. So it was a part-time team. Oh, sorry, a amateur, totally amateur team. They pay to play. Uh, they pay for their training facilities. So what I did, I got Gaston Ramirez and Paulo Gasaniga, who was the goalkeeper uh, mm-hmm. there now at Girona, uh, to pay for their pitches. So from training once, now we were training three times. And the, play, the professional football players from the men team, they pay for the pitches for the women. So I got them there to, to help. I mean, it was life-changing. So we stra- so Hanton women struggled to field that team. They, some games they play with nine, you know, players quitting because it was really, they were bottom of the bottom of the table with zero points. Um, we managed to avoid relegation that year. The next year we won the league. Um, it was in the same league, we won the league. It was so so good, so good for me, so good for for the players, everyone. Because I was involved with the men, everyone started to to come. Girls that left before that were talented, they, they now wanted to come back again. So I have a big squad. I start to have to drop players from the squad, which is it was something. Anyway, it was it was a great great uh, learning opportunity for me, um, and I was able to do no free time, of course, twenty four seven football, two jobs. <laughs> so one I got paid the other, but I have to still do it. 
So I was finishing at seven from Southampton training and go straight uh, to coach. We will train at seven thirty or eight o'clock to coach the the, the women team uh, three times a week. So it was it was very demanding. Games day, uh, we were lucky because most of the times we play Saturdays and then Sunday we were off. So I could do, but obviously if it clash, then uh, the men the men game will have to take priority, obviously. But yeah, so I, I did I did that and then the rest is history. From there, after Mauricio went to Spurs, Ronald Koeman came. I decided to stay at Southampton um, to learn the position I played from Johan Cruyff, which was something I always wanted. And we did amazing, qualified for Europa League with Southampton. We both went to Everton. My condition to sign for Everton was exactly the same. Uh, I say to Kuman, I only go to Everton if I get involved with Everton ladies. Uh, and and they did that. So I was involved, involved in as well as a volunteer uh, at Everton ladies. And yeah, and um, that was for six, six and a bit, almost seven years uh, in the Premier League, doing both roles. And yeah, so after that, obviously now here, but um, that's how that's how it all started. I think I've been talking for half an hour. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, uh, stuff like this, I love I love to hear it because people see you on when Celtic are playing and it's on Sky or it's the highlight show and you're getting interviewed, but they don't maybe fully appreciate the full journey that you've taken, um, and it just hopefully goes to show as a as a bit of inspiration to to everyone out there, boys or girls, that if you want to be somewhere, you want to get somewhere in the game, the opportunity is there for you, depending if you want to put the work in. And uh, I think you're a, you're a testament to that. A hundred percent, because uh, I had a zero talent in terms of coaching, zero. I I used to play, but uh, you know, obviously, I, I used to be coached by coaches who were nowhere near the level of the coaches that later I worked with. And I realize now, because we all think we know a lot about football, but then the more you learn, the more you realize that actually pff, I didn't know as much as I, you know, and I think this is a, in the state we are all. Uh, in two years' time, I will realize that now I don't know as many things as as I should know. Um, but anyway, I didn't have any skills. I didn't have any qualification. So I have zero, zero reason to, to be a, 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 a professional football manager which is what I am now, zero. The only thing I, I excel is determination. This, yes, I never give up determination and I'm willing to, to I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I've always been like that, not for football, but for everything. That's my only skill. So if I can do that, anyone can do it. I can guarantee you that anyone can do it. Um, it's just a matter of how how much are you willing to, to, to sacrifice uh, because it looks nice. It looks, you know, I got a job that I absolutely love um, I would do it for free, but don't tell Celtic that. <laughs> <I'll put> that <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you know, obviously, um, how many toilets are killing? Uh, getting up at four 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 a.m. every single day uh, because I start at five, uh, five five a.m. because the gym needed to be all clean, the sports center before six o'clock when they open. So this is the small letter that nobody read, but or not many people read. But yeah, it's. That's, that's the tough time. It's not the glamorous uh, things, but uh, that take take you to the other stuff. Um, but anyone can do that. Uh, it's just if you want it or how much you want it. No, that's great, Fran. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. It's been really insightful and I'm sure the, the viewers will, will enjoy it as well. Thank you very much. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure. And thanks everyone for joining us on SWPL My Story Short.